This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we'll be piping buttercream corn flowers. It's broken down into steps, so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. Let's get started and make the colors for our flower. We're going to use American Style Buttercream and the following liquid gel colors. Sky Blue. Royal Blue, and Violet. And we're gonna create two shades of a nice kind of periwinkle purple, one light for the petals and one dark for the center. I've got some of each color out on my lid and I'm gonna start with the color for the petals. I wanna use Sky and the Violet and I wanna make kind of like, almost like a bright periwinkle. Like the Sky Blue is a little bit electric, kind of aqua feel. So it's going to give you a different tone when mixed with that purple. Just make sure that's my purple. Yeah. Um, to create a different kind of periwinkle versus if you mix royal with your purple. So we want it to have that kind of brightness from the sky. So I start out with a few big specks of that sky, not just a little bit of my purple. And I'll probably add just a touch more of my purple. But I don't want to put in too much color. I don't want it to be dark. I want it to be a nice kind of light shade. And these are relatively small flowers, so you don't need a lot of buttercream for them. We're getting there just a little bit further with our purple. It's just starting to get that periwinkle vibe and move from being a blue to kind of a light purple. Just one of those nice in-between shades is what we're going for. I think this is gonna be it. I definitely want it to read more as a purple, less as a blue. And that's going to be a beautiful shade for our petals. Now we're going to make a darker shade for our centers. And for this one, we're going to use the royal along with the purple. So we definitely want more color here. We want it to be darker. And we also want to change up the blue we're using to kind of change the tone of it. So you can see immediately it gives you a different feel using that royal blue with our purple. And it's looking good. I'm just gonna need a little bit more color to get it where I want it to be. I want it to be significantly darker than the first shade that we made so that it really pops out against those petals. And that looks lovely. For this flower, we're gonna use two bags. They're both 12 inch disposable bags. You can use whatever you like. And we fitted them directly with the tips. For our lighter shade of purple, we're using a 102 petal tip. So this is a small straight petal tip. For our darker shade of purple, we're using a number one. So a nice tiny round opening. Let's review our techniques for our corn flower. For our petals, we're gonna be using that 102 tip for both styles. For the first one, I'm calling them little forked petals. They look kind of like they've got that little kind of, um, like a snake forked tongue almost at the back. We're gonna hold the bag at 90 degrees, so the tip is gonna be straight up and down. The fat end of the tip will be towards the center of our flower nail when we're piping. And we're going to just quickly pull out, take a little zigzag and pull back. And that's gonna give us that little dip there and hopefully those two little spiked ends. For the second style, we're gonna do, I just called them little heart tops. So we're gonna start instead of all the way back, kind of like halfway where we want our petal to be, 
bag is going to be at 45 degrees and we're going to draw a little heart and you pull back with the end and that's going to kind of meet up with that first little um, kind of start of our petal and give us our little tapered shape but the ends of these are going to be a little softer than the forked ones that we did and finally for our centers we're going to use our bag with our number one tip and we're going to just create some spikes and the important part about these spikes is that instead of like normal where we're just going to pull up we're going to pull at all angles so yep straight up is going to be one of them and we always want to do the same thing over and over again squeeze till you get a little ball and then pull away while st still squeezing except in this case we're also going to pull straight out to the side at a 45 degree angle and straight up and it's going to give us this nice kind of hairy center with a lot of interest a lot of detail and a lot of movement because all of those little spikes are going to get pulled at different fun little angles and it's going to kind of create the illusion of that center opening up for you now let's go over how we're going to take the techniques we just reviewed and use them to build our cornflower blossoms also called bachelor buttons we're going to start out with our 102 tip and do a layer of petals all around the bottom. We're gonna to be towards the outside edge of the flower nail when we're creating these, and we wanna leave a void in the center. So just a full layer of those forked petals go all the way around close together. For our second layer, we're gonna pull ourselves in a little bit. We're still gonna do our little forked ones. They might be a little less precise since we're piping on top of frosting and not directly on our parchment paper, but that's okay. So they're gonna start a little further back, so kind of in the dip, come up on those, and we don't wanna go all the way out to the edge. We wanna just go kind of maybe like, I don't know, like leave like a little bit of like, maybe an eighth of an inch there. So they're just a little bit shorter. Go all the way around, and if you can, do them offset from the first layer. So it'll give them a little more interest, kind of help you build them up if you start between two petals and try and keep it that way. But if you get a little off as you go, it's not a big deal. We're actually going to cover these up. So we're gonna keep with our one or two, but we're gonna do those little heart top petals now. And we're gonna to start towards the um, edge of our second layer of fourth ones do those little hearts and pull it out past the edge and then pull all the way back. And we should get close to filling up the center at this point, but if there's still a little gap in there, that's totally fine. You wanna go all the way around again. And what this does is create the illusion of fullness and separation between the petals. We have this smaller layer in here that's just kind of a little bit smaller and it should create a tiny bit of a gap or the effect of one so that the flowers have some fullness. And because we started a little far out left that gap in the center and each time we did petals we're going to pull a little further down it starts to create an angle so that we're kind of have this little wedge shape to those petals and they kind of flow down towards the center so it's going to create this nice little area in here this little dip where we then can put on our centers so it's really important as you're going especially to start with leave a little hole in that bottom layer so that you can set up the angles for those petals so you have this nice effect of an opening blossoming flower we're going to finish things up with our number one and we're going to pull those spikes at all angles so we want to start kind of at the base of the petals wherever they end and pull directly out and kind of mimic the angle of those petals i might just flick up a tiny bit at the end to give it some separation between the frosting but for the most part with that first row layer around go all the way around right right along that angle and then the next one just a little bit of separation so just pull it a slight angle away from them third is probably going to be 45 degrees fourth one might be straight up and we want some of them to be just straight up and short and some of them to kind of curve in and that's going to give us a nice frilly kind of fun and wild center in that darker color and that's how we'll build our cornflower blossoms now that we've reviewed our techniques let's actually try piping one. I have my smaller flower nail, it's my two inch nail. I've got my bag with my lighter color and my 102 tip ready to go. I'm gonna hold it for this first layer straight up and down. And you can see, I'm gonna leave kind of a void where I can see the frosting that's attaching my parchment to my nail. 
in the center. So I want to start out a little bit away from the center and just go ahead and start putting on some of those petals. And I really want to make sure I'm kind of pressing down with it so that I really get that nice little fork to those. And I find that it really helps if you move kind of quickly with these. And just pull towards the center every time and try to leave that gap there and not pull too long. And get the last one kind of squeezed in. So you can see I've got a nice layer of those forked petals all the way around the bottom. They're not all perfectly even, but that's fine. These are kind of wild flowers, so you don't want them all to cookie cutter and exactly the same. And we've left a nice hole in the middle. So now we're going to set up to do our second layer of petals. For my second row of petals, we're going to do forked ones. We're going to start just a little bit further in and we're not going to pull out as far. And I want to start in between two petals. So just pick a spot and start drawing. Oh, there we go. Shorter forked petals. And you can see this kind of sets us up. So we get a bit of an angle to these. And it's okay if these are a little messy and a little puffy. That's actually going to give you a really nice effect and some great separation between the bottom row and the top row we're going to create. And just as before, we want to make sure we leave a gap in the center. There we go. For our third row, we're going to do those little heart top petals. So we're going to start 45 degrees, our fat end is towards the center, skinny end is out, and we're going to start halfway on our second row. So not towards the middle, halfway up, and then just draw your little heart loops. Pull them all the way back to the center at the end. So remember to start halfway up. You want to go out past the edge. So you can see you got that little bit of separation and definition between the top row, that little bit of spacing. That's exactly what we're looking for. So pull them out kind of as far as you can without having them really flop over and close or lose that little gap between the petals. So our second row is really just kind of a bit of a fake out. It's kind of there to make sure that this top third row stands up and gives us a little bit of height and dimension and has some support, but it doesn't really end up being seen. That's why I never care if it looks a little bit messy. We'll just keep going around till we get back to the beginning. And if you have room for it and you need to do a last one in there and you're kind of like, oh, gonna run into the first one, rock the back end of the bag up. Mine kind of ended almost perfectly. I don't even really have room for a last one there. Um, but if you need to, that's a good way to squeeze in a petal. If you're at 45 degrees and you're gonna run into your first one when you're going around in a circle like this, just rock the bag up at the end if there's not quite enough room to squeak that in and that should allow you to slide the back edge of a petal in if needed. Now that we've got our third row of petals on there and you can kind of see there's that kind of buffer, that space in between a little bit of air and lightness and it gives us a nice effect with the flowers when viewed from the top and the sides. We're gonna pick up our bag with our darker color and our number one and fill in the center. So let's do our centers. We're going to start at the base of our petals and pull spikes directly out. So just pull one, give your nail a little bit of turn so that you can get the next one in there. And we just wanna follow the angle of the petals. So whatever they're doing, that's what you're gonna do. That's the angle you're gonna pull along for this first 
little layer. So just give it a little spin, keep going around until you get all the way back to the beginning and you meet up with your first one. Now that we've got a nice little layer, you can see that great contrast between the two colors. We're gonna start pulling just instead of straight out at a little bit of an angle. So each time kind of a little bit shorter, potentially. And at a little bit of an angle. Then we want to start going kind of up, right? So not a 45 degree angle, not flat, just up a little bit. You can fill in your center with straight up petals too. And then just anywhere you need it, pull an extra one. So just kind of spin it around, look at it, look at how it's kind of moving and flopping over. You can always pull some across the center if you want a little motion going in, but you can see that gives us a nice, beautiful center. It has a lot of movement to it. It's interesting, but it's not difficult to create. And they look kind of wild and frilly, just like actual cornflowers. That's all for this lesson on cornflowers. If you enjoy making this flower with us, try checking out some of our other basic flower tutorials like the daisy and our basic rose. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.